What's going on guys, welcome back to episode 10, the series finale of NHL 22 Arizona Coyotes franchise mode. If you guys missed the last episode, spoiler alert, as we're actually coming off a Stanley Cup win, our second Stanley Cup in five years. I'm hoping we can go back to back here and win our third. And real quick guys, if you wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this video, it really helps me out. You guys might have noticed they already started simming the preseason, currently 5-1. Matthews there has 13 points in six games, he's averaging over two points a game. We're just beating up on teams in the preseason, 10-1 winning at the Jets. 12-4 against the Blackhawks, scoring a lot of points. So I'll show you guys the lines heading into this year, the final year. Very happy with how they're looking. We got Demarchi, Matthews, and Wright in a plus five. I would say that was probably the best line in the NHL last year. Wright put up 122 points, 89 assists. Matthews had like 118 points, 60 goals. So uh, those two did well. Of course, Demarchi played very well with them too. We had to struggle, but got him signed to one year at 10 million after he asked for 18. Bolt here, we were actually able to make a trade for, get fourth overall. Awesome shot, supposed to play like Solani. Look at all those X factors. He's on the second line there with Geeky and Funk. Emin in there, Mayorov and Hopes on the third line. Hopes kind of like a good playmaker, is also a two-way forward. Mayorov here is just an insane two-way forward, like 99D awareness, stick check, um, discipline, 99 agility. Hopefully he works out. And then Emin, of course, has the crazy shot, was an AHL beast. Colin White, McConnell Barker, and Ogren there on the fourth line. Defensively here, Renski and Klinge is the top pair. Bokun, Shikran on the second. Autovine and Clefbaum on the bottom pair. Goaltending wise, Andre there slower starter. Even though he's gone down in range to an 89. Savage backing up to an 83. 21 medium elite. A few X factors. I think he's going to be sick. So in terms of the power play, we get plus five on both. And I think the first power play is what we rocked last year. You guys can see the second there is also really solid. And I mean, obviously I'm not going to complain. Plus five on both power plays is pretty insane. Four man power play gets a plus five on the first, plus two on second. PK is plus three, plus two, three man's plus one, zero. The chemistry is looking good. Now AHL, we're trying out a ton of things. Fabrizieri, Koi won the first line. One of many guys we have with a great shot. Uh, Gosselin there also has a really good shot. Stan Coven in the middle. Blund in there has a great shot. Uh, Goulas here, perfect slab shot. Martinez, really good shot. Uh, Ledecker here, pretty good defensively. Also has a decent shot and pretty good passing. And then the fourth line here is like just a bunch of D awareness studs. 97, 97, 95. Also, Michelli there with 95 has a pretty good wrist shot too. So, even though these guys are lower rated, I think I'm looking at it like analytically. The stats that matter are pretty good. Defensively, Thomas Howes on the top here get a plus three. Haller Edmondson, Leslie Shanahan. Edmondson was going to be on the NHL team, but he dropped in rating and he actually didn't even fit chemistry wise. Anderson there starting goalie is a 79. Matthew here is elite, backing him up 67. So, team's looking good. Uh, captaincy. I haven't told you guys in a bit, is the same as last time. Matthews, of course, still wearing that C. And then we have Wright and Chicken there, both wearing A's. Also, too, guys, I have to show you the record book. I think I mentioned beginning of the last episode how Ottinger was poised to break the franchise record for wins, which he did. He's now up to 155. Kind of crazy. He's only got seven shutouts. And then in terms of season records, Shane Wright actually set the record for most assists with 89. So that season where Solani put up 132 points, he had 76 goals, therefore did not have 89 assists. He was more of a goal scorer. So... Pretty cool, we've broken a couple records there. We've also broken a game record. Clayton Keller has six assists, 2023. I've yet to break a rookie record though. So I'm hoping, um, I'm not sure which record we're gonna break. I don't think um, our rookie, as good as he is, is gonna put up 132 points or 76 goals or probably 58 assists. You never know, I definitely have some high hopes here for Holden Bolt, I think that's a sick name as well. Now before I start simming here, guys, we're gonna show you the ratings for this final year. Uh, pretty solid team all around, honestly. So you can see here we have 97 offense, 100 defense, 88 goaltending. Again, we should be, you know, poised to defend our cup here. Do a quick sim, see if we go 6-1 uh, and one in the preseason. We do. Matthew's there. Still averaging over 2 a game with 15-7. and seven, So we're looking pretty good. Okay, guys, I had to pause the sim. We're at the end of November right now with a 16-2-1 record. This is stupid how good we are. AHL team 17-2-1. Wow, our teams are insane. So at the end of December here, guys, our record's 26, 4, and 3. I'm actually annoyed now when I get a loss. We only got, like, what, two losses in our last 12 games? 26, 4, and 3. We got to be first in the NHL, you'd think. AHL team is 31, 4, and 1. Wow. So both franchises are going crazy. Would it be awesome to win a Stanley Cup and a Calder Cup both in our final year? The Wild are right on our tail at 52. And remember, they got last last year or like last in division at least, fire their head coach, they're already back to being a contender. Um, 55 points though does put us first in the NHL. The fact the Wild are so close is ridiculous. Matthews has 51 points right now in 33 games. He's playing unreal. AHL wise, we've got what, 63 points. 
There's only one other team even in the 50s, so looking pretty good. Zeri there, 40 and 36. We'll get to the deadline. Honestly, if we're still playing insane, I don't even know if I want to make a trade. If it's not broke, don't fix it. All right, guys, I think I broke franchise mode. Our teams are insane. NHL team has a record of 58 and 5 at the deadline for 105 points. Back in January, we actually went on a 14 game win streak, starting there with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, we get 5, 8, 12, 13, 14 games before losing to the Ducks. Just ridiculous. AHL team, 52, 6, and 5. Currently have 109 points at the deadline. I mean, <laughs> like, this is insane. Like, I don't think I should make a trade. Like, you really can't expect to do better than this ever. Uh, Zeri there only with 76 and 63. So I think the AHL team is, you know, really getting it done there by committee. Next best AHL team is 89. So we have a 20-point lead in the NHL. Next best is the Wild with 91. 14 point lead. We're probably going to play them second round, of course, because just how the playoffs go. Matthews there is 83 and 63. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll get to the deadline. Obviously, we're a buyer. Not only are we insane, but it's the last year. Why sell? Um, I don't, I've never, like, I don't think I've ever not made a trade at the deadline, but in our final year, the team is kind of playing exactly as we'd hope. Like, you really can't expect any better. Clayton Keller is available. I could almost bring him back, put him on the fourth line just for fun. Um, I don't know. Um, Shea Theodore would be pretty nice. And again, though, it would have to work cap-wise. Soderstrom, 5.7. The value's not too crazy. Okay, if we do anything, I think we're going to bring back Keller or Soderstrom as just a depth option at this point, honestly, and that'd be it. I should mention, too, you got Drysdale, Shabbat, and Elander all available, so... This is a pretty big trade deadline. All right, guys, so just for fun here, we're going to see if we can bring in Soderstrom, offering up Hamilton, unsigned, meme league goalie, and a second-round pick. Detroit said no to that. I am retaining 50%. Now, the Vancouver second-round pick's worth almost double, so Vancouver must be having a good year. They say yes to that. Okay, so I'm hoping, like, it doesn't mess their lines because I've just brought in Soderstrom on top of our already existing players. Literally just going to plug him in on the bottom D pair. Nothing else. <laughs> we should still be good. I'd like to add Keller too, but as you can see there, we're actually like 400k above the max cap. I'm just hoping that trade will work for us, let alone also bringing in Keller. All right, guys, so the trade deadline's now over. The Soderstrom trade was the only one I made, as like I said, didn't really want to tinker the team too much. They're playing really well, but I figured why not bring back a foreign player in Soderstrom. Helps out our defense, which is already 100 defense, so now it's just, I don't know, 105. Uh, Johnny Goudreau there goes to the Blue Jackets for Jake Bean. Pretty big trade, honestly. Uh, Sokolov there to the Oilers. Morgan Frost goes to Tampa Bay. Wallstrom to Montreal. Uh, Lodrigan there and Bode Wild both go to the Red Wings. Um, Miro Shachanko goes to Boston. Our trade for Soderstrom there. Um, let's see here. Chalowski to the Knights. Um, anything else? Cody Glass there to the Bruins. Darnell Nurse to LA. Those are some big trades. Sam Bennett to the Vegas Golden Knights with Peak. Pellet goes to the Oilers. Lucas Reichel to Buffalo. So Chicago looks to be selling off. Don't mind that at all, obviously. They're in hard division. So um, hopefully I can work Sarsham in here and they didn't mess the lines. So after the trade deadline, guys, here's an updated look at the team. Obviously, forward group has not changed. Defensively, we now have Clefbaum, Sarsham on the bottom pair. I just noticed Clefbaum's shot is so good, all 88. So I try to get him involved more in the power play, the four-man. But when I replaced Rowenski for him, our chemistry went down to zero there. So it just wasn't really worth it. Um, other than the bottom pair, I think Sarsham's only playing on, like, the three on three and the four on four lines so like all the extra lines i don't usually show you guys but um obviously he's, he's pretty good it's kind of crazy we have an 87 as our fifth best defenseman like it's already 100d it's going to be very very good now i was looking at our ahl team a bit too a couple of these guys on the fourth line michelli here 32 goals 12 minutes a night fourth line forward like that is nuts mcclellan fourth line center has 45 assists he's got 60 points that 97 passing has got to be huge really good slap shot i think he's like our fourth line center plus He's on the second power play. Uh, just kind of crazy, honestly, how good both these teams are doing. So um, I'm going to keep Simmy here at the end of the season. Hopefully, um, you know, we kind of keep playing well here. Don't want to mess with anything. And look at that, guys. I just noticed we've already got a playoff spot at the deadline. Not a single other team does because that would just be crazy if they did. Um, AHL team doesn't, though, with 111. That's kind of nuts. And we're the season, guys. The record is 64, 11, and 7. Honestly, I'm surprised we didn't hit 65 wins considering where we were at the deadline, but... 135 points on the year, definitely not going to complain. AHL team finished 66, 10, and 6. Is that not like the record we had last year? It's very close at least, uh, totaling 138 points. I know we set the record the other time. If I remember right from last episode, the AHL regular season record was 59 wins, which we beat here by 7, but last year our AHL team had 73 wins, so 
Um, seven better than the record, but seven worse than last season. Now, the NHL team here, guys, with 64 wins actually is a record. The Red Wings and the Tampa Bay Lightning there are tied with 62 wins apiece and 131 points for the Red Wings. We finished with 64 wins on 135 points. So in our final year, we set the NHL regular season record. So I would say we can call this regular season a success. Still got to go on and win the Stanley Cup. So right there at 112 points, awesome to see him, you know, really looking like that franchise generational player. Matthews 110, still playing well, early 30s. Funk 87, good year for him. DeMarchi 83, still over a point per game. Penalty minutes though, 174. This guy can't stay out of the box. Uh, what's his fighting skill? It's only 74, so if he's fighting a lot, he's, you know, he's losing them, and he's got 90 discipline. That's 174, especially when you look at everyone else's numbers, like, that's crazy. Um, I was trying to see, too, someone said, look if he's fighting, but I don't think, are there, oh, wow, he's fighting quite a bit. 26 fights. <laughs> this guy, wow. I think I was on this screen before trying to see how many fights he had, and I couldn't see it, but on the stat page, you can. 26 fights, definitely a fan favorite. Over a point per game, 26 fights. I'm sure the fans love them. Chikrin, 72. Renski, 70. Geeky, 67. Hope, 58. Volkun, 57. Volt, 54 in his rookie years. Not bad. I was hoping he'd do a little bit better than that, playing second line, but I'll take it. I think he's probably got a chance at the Calder. Emin in there, 46. Hoping for a bit better from him. Mayorov here, 45, plus 33. I feel like, you know, he probably did his job there. White, 43 there as a fourth liner is actually really good. Same with Urban, 37. Colin Barker, 35. Let's see Andre's stats here, 53 and 10, 3 shutouts, by 906, 2.73. I would say he played good enough, obviously, for us to set a record. Stan Coben, 105, Zeri, 103, AHL teams, nuts, plus 60. Blunden, plus 67, 95 points. This guy is nuts. Perfect wrist shot, though, 97 passing. Watch him not even grow in rating. Fabry, also 95. Koivu, 81. McClellan there, 78. This is the guy that was playing fourth line center, and he had almost had a point per game. That's insane. Goulis, Goslin, Martinez, 69, nice. AHL team, they're uh, they're incredible. 0.908 to 2.29 for Anderson. That's pretty solid. So I'm actually curious, AHL, do we have the uh, scoring leaders? Stan Coben, 1, Zary, 2, Blunden, 4, Fabry, 5. So we have four of the top five scores in the AHL. That is ridiculous. NHL, Rossi's first, 122. Kaprizov, second. Right third, Bedard fourth, Matthews fifth. So we got two of the top five. I'm a little bit worried though, because three of the top seven are that Minnesota Wild first line, and obviously the top two, Rossi, Kaprizov. And we're probably going to play them second round. So this might be a little bit tough. I almost forgot to check goals here. Matthew Boley taking home Marisha Shard. Defensively here, Fox, 79. He was still doing well. Chicken third. And then, I mean, we had Renski there at sixth. That's pretty good, I think. Um, goalies, I don't think Andre's numbers were good enough. He did have the most wins, obviously, but... Uh, Burmistrov, our old goalie, now starting for the Avs, fifth round pick by us, 0.92, that's the best for a starter, and goals against here, Allen Feltz, best for a starter, 2.55, another old goalie of ours, that's kind of crazy. And I almost forgot guys, rookie skaters, points, Bolt is first, 54, and actually 8 point lead on Lowry, plus 27, I think we're going to have our first Calder Trophy winner, I don't think anyone's won it for us, right, because I'm pretty sure Wright got beat out by... That guy went first overalls. And as I was saying this, guys, I realized Lowry here was second in scoring. was actually a former AHL player of ours. We traded away. So if he finished higher in scoring than Bolt and won the Calder as a 24-year-old rookie, I'd be so pissed. I uh, will take a look here. Entire league. See if anyone squeaked into the playoffs. And I just caught Minnesota finished second with 119 points. So they're an insane team as well. I am I'm so disappointed we have to play them second round. Columbus squeak in there at the 18th spot. Ottawa, I think that's their third straight year getting last. That's... Really unfortunate. 370 goals for. Goals against. 230. Okay, so we're going to get the William M. Jennings trophy. That is cool. AHL team. 138 points of the best by far. Goals for. They had 100 more than the next best team. Our AHL team is literally a cheat code. Goals against. At least Barracuda were like 50 away, but still, like, the AHL team is ridiculous. So the analytic kind of base team there definitely worked. So we'll see here who we have in the first round. Like I said, unless we get knocked out first round here by the Flames. We're probably going to be playing the Minnesota Wild in round number two, which would basically be like a pseudo Stanley Cup final. Now, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. The Flames here have a good team. Kachuk, Kovalev, Potola, first line, looks nice. 79 bets, though. He's got X factors. Wow. <laughs> That's why he's second line. Terrible hands, perfect shot, quick, great D awareness. No offense awareness, though. How did this guy do? He only had 33 goals. Yeah, so even with the great shot, he's got just such bad hands, offense awareness. Playing Lindholm there, Kolosov. Gauthier, 88, Verhage, 
Bystet, McLennan, Klebov, Palin, Sal. Oh, wow, their defense all the way 80s. Our defense. I was about to say how Soderstrom, our fifth best defense, would be their number one. But honestly, our number six defenseman in Koivu would be their number one because he's tied with uh, Sal and Bikov. That's ridiculous. Goaltending, Dossel starting for them. Borklin there backing him up. We saw Borklin had good numbers, but uh, that was as a backup. So here we go, guys. Last playoff. How are we going to do? Home ice advantage throughout this whole thing. And we get two wins. 6-5 OT win and a 3-0 win. Can we keep it going in Calgary? 5-3 win. 4-1 win. Let's go. We get the sweep. Honestly, I, I thought I might have jinxed it with how much, you know, I was pumping up round two against Minnesota. I see Minnesota's actually down three games to two to the Blackhawks. And it's now 3-3. Who's it going to be? The Minnesota Wild do hold on. I was really hoping uh, Chicago would upset them because... Chicago would definitely have been an easier opponent. Especially since we saw Chicago made two big trades for the deadline where they were trading away guys. So um, if they would have beat Minnesota, that would have honestly been a huge upset. Geeky there at 7-4 right now. We'll take a look at that Minnesota team. We know they're going to be a tough, tough competitor. It's still so weird to me too how they got last last year and then fired their coach after I think winning the cup the year before. Kaprizov, Rossi, Prez Hogan. Bully's actually on the second line. Eric Sinek, Konechny, another Prez Hogan. Must be a popular, like, creative name. Phillips, Foote, uh, Deming, Lowry, Savage. So Lowry's an old player of ours. Hopefully he doesn't pull a haul away and, like, score a bunch on us. Um, defensively, Tersambayev, and that's about it. I guess the right side's decent, but really not compared to ours. Wallset's still a good goalie. If by some chance we get him out of the net, we should be good from there on out because they have a 75 backup. So let's see what happens here guys I do want to try and check the ratings it's always so tough I don't know why it doesn't show the ratings at the same time it makes no sense we know what ours are so what are theirs 96 89 92 I believe 96 89 82 okay so uh, they actually have lower rating than us across the board is it gonna matter maybe not because it's the playoffs anything can happen I'm honestly wondering if I should send this period by period I think so it's the final episode this could be our final series let's go 2-1 lead. Sarstrom to Marchi. 2-2. Also, I just noticed Lowry, our old player, got the first goal of the uh, series for them. Like, how typical. Prez Hogan there in the second. Wow, and they beat us 4-3. Are you kidding me? Uh, definitely not how I want to start this series, but uh, still a lot of games left here. So, of course, we got back-to-back -back games at home. Need to win game two. Here we go. Up 3-0. Let's go. Matthews with a couple. To Marchi with one. 4-1 and 5-1. I was hoping maybe Matthews could have gotten the hat trick, but... I'll take the win there. So, series is tied one apiece. Head to Minnesota now. Hopefully, we can take the lead. I see the Avs there beating the Ducks 2 0 in the other semifinal matchup. 2 1. Marchi Funk. Perez Hogan for them. I'm not sure if, which brother it is or whatever. Phillips, we actually had him in the AHL for a bit. So, it's 2 2. 5 2. What a third. Mayorov, Demarchi, Funk with the empty netter. Let's go. So, 2 1 series lead here. I mean, the fact that they have two of our old AHL players on their NHL team. We can't let these guys beat us, but that first line they have is nasty. 2-0. Eminem DeMarchi. 2-1. Matthew Boldy. 4-3. Are you kidding me? Boys, just hold on. We actually outsought them 42-25, I saw. Wow, we really needed to hold on to that one. So, series is tied 2-2. The good news is both of our losses have been one-goal games. This is a big, pivotal game five at home in Arizona. And we're up 3-0. Right, McConnell Barker, Eminem. Why? They just, they fight back every time. And we hold on 5-3. Matthews, Kaprizov, Rensky, empty netter. I am so stressed in this series because I know, like, this is the series. This is the team that's got the best chance to take a set, at least on paper. And we now have the 3-2 series lead. One more game. Bring us to the conference final. Here we go. Game 6, up 2 nothing. Geeky clinch. They're always going to answer back. Perez Hogan. And we hold on 4-1, right in funk. On to the conference final. Beating the Minnesota Wild there in six games. Honestly, guys, I was so worried. We have the Avalanche here, though. Um, even 10 years in, I think the Avalanche are still a dynasty. I mean, their team's built around the car. Geeky there, 15-10. and 10. Um, I believe they still have Rantanen. Still a very good team. No McKinnon, though. We know uh, he actually left. So they got Line A, Newhook, Rantanen, first line. Best line in Joss, Toybert. Uh, Landis Cox on the team at 78. Finley, Thompson, Lupul, Bjork, and uh, Wiseman. Byron McCarr, sick top pair. After that, though... Not as much depth, because I think McCarr is making, like, yeah, $14 million. Uh, Bremistrov there, our old goalie. Okay, we, so many of our old players. That's just how good of our franchise is. Like, when we trade away guys who are extras on our team, AHL, whatever, they end up being, you know, uh, regular, like, everyday NHLers on other teams. Cannot lose to our old uh, backup goalie. So, 
Here we go, guys. Gain number one. They're eight and three, right and two. Up two to one. Right and Bolt, Landis Cog for them. Carlo adds one. We hold on 5 2. Big third period. Ogren, Eminen, Renski there, empty netter. Definitely like it when we win the first game. Otherwise, you know, you're kind of playing behind the eight ball the entire series. So, if we could go up 2 nothing on the Avalanche here, I'd have a much better feeling about our chances. Our 2 nothing in game two. White and Mayorov, 3 nothing. Demarchi, 6 nothing. Bolt, Hope, Mayorov. Wow. So, Andre heard me talking about our old goalie. He puts up a shutout. And we put in six on them. That's what I want to see. We could sweep the abs. That would be a statement for the uh, Seneca final. Up two to one. Funk and Matthews Nook for them. Big second for them. We get one from right. Ranch and Veselinen. And we hold on to Marchi there with the game winner. Uh, showing why we paid that guy $10 million. So we're up 3 nothing now in the Colorado Avalanche. Just have to win one of these next four games. I don't care which one it is. Just win one of the next four. Matthews opens up the scoring in game number four. 2-1 now. Matthews again. Byron for them. 3-3. Three three. Uh, Lance Cog, new hook. Chicken for us. Come on, Matthews. Hat-trick game winner. And we do win, but it's Demarchi. This dude just full of game-winning goals. Let's go. Uh, I don't care how much he fights. I'm just in the box. He is earning that contract uh, for sure. And look at this. We have the back-to-back real-life Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning, in the Stanley Cup final. We're 12-2 right now in this playoff run. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, Demarchi there, 12-14. I just realized I forgot about the AHL team, and that's because apparently they got knocked out in the first round. Are you kidding me? Our AHL team is so much better than everyone else, and we lost three games to one in the first round of the Henderson Silver Knights. I don't know. That's just bad luck, I guess, the AHL team, or maybe, I don't know, players with bad poise. DeMarchi trying to win another Conn Smythe trophy. He's got 21 and 14 right now. Uh, I wish I had, like, a nickname for him, but can't think of one. So, Tim Bay Lightning here. They got Engel, Point, Kucherov. First line, Kucherov 37, but still pretty sick. Chinikov, Velarde, Rosovich, Ratcliffe, Frost, an old player of ours, Letnin, Comfort, Dallin, Fogel. Defensively, Sergeyev, Briere, Ristolainen, Mahura, uh, Korobov, and Keane. So after Sergeyev, it's pretty weak on D. And even offensively, honestly, this isn't that great. Like, they have a couple stars in angle and point, and then, like, nothing that great. Vashlesi still their starter in 81. And he's putting up good numbers, probably because of all those X-Factors, even though he's 36 years old. So, I mean, I like our chances. I just remember two guys. I don't know why I thought of this. But uh, scratch this entire year. Morgan Kiki has been along for the ride. I don't know why I just thought of that. But uh, let's try to win a cup here. So, Stanley Cup Final, Arizona Coyotes, Tampa Bay Lightning. You got the worst team in the league right now in real life versus the best team. They're 12-4, we're 12-2. Let's go. Game 1 in Arizona. They're up 2-1. to one. White's the only goal scorer for us. 2-2. Two, two, Funk answers back. And we hold, or not hold on. We take the game. 3-2 to two there. Renski with the game winner. Let's go. So if we could win both these games against Tampa, imagine back-to-back -back cups through the end of the series. That'd be so amazing. Here we go. Game number 2. 1-1. One, one. Hope for us. Ratcliffe for them. Wasn't Ratcliffe on our team for a bit, I think, too? Point for them. Bolt for us. Game uh, Third period here. 4-3. to three. Let's go. Ogren and White. Frost for them. Speaking of old players, but uh, we hold on there to take a 2-0 series lead. Hand to Tampa Bay, Florida now. If we can uh, win this next one, I'm liking our chances. Here we go. Game 3 in Tampa. We're up 1. Ogren, 4-4. Four, four. What a second. McConnell Barker, Matthew Sarsham for us. Point, angle, comfort, line for them. Aw, oh, 7-5. They take it. I mean, that's not good. They scored, what, 7 goals? Yeah, all in the second two periods, so... Cannot have that happening. Luckily, though, just have to win this next one. And we have a 3-1 lead, but obviously if they win it, series is all tied up. Let's see what happens here. 2-0. Funk and Ogren. 2-2. Two, two. Point and Letton in. 3-3. Three, three. Kucherov and Wright going to OT. Let's go. Demarchi. Are you kidding me? This guy doesn't do anything but score game-winning goals and win fights. So that is awesome. Game number 5 now. Potential Stanley Cup winning game. we got three chances at it. First one's at home. I'm pretty sure last year we won not home, right? I want to say we won in Buffalo. 1-0 lead. Shane Wright. 3-0 lead. Ogren and Bolt. Resume simulation. Speed it up. 3-0 lead. Equal shots. Whole third period still to play, essentially. Can we hold on? Basically, just cannot pull a Maple Leaf circa 2014 against the Bruins. Half the period gone now. Power play, no goal. But, oh, Chinikov from the outside. I heard someone say that the goal spot actually is like just made up, they just put it anywhere. Chinikov with two, 
We're up one with a minute left. CPU versus CPU. I'm not going to play, obviously. Can we hold on here and win the Stanley Cup at home and gain over five? And right here, guys, you can actually see the ratings. Look at this. Four better offense, 14 better defense, and I think eight better goaltending that was. Look at that. Arizona Coyotes, Tampa Bay Lightning. This is what you play for. One minute left. 3-2 game now. I can't believe we let Chinikov kind of be a hero here for Tampa Bay and make it this close. I mean, they're going to pull their goalie soon. Once they do, we just have to take advantage. Ogre in the fourth line's out here. This is our shutdown line. I don't know. I purposely probably have just the top line out. Chinikov actually came in there and almost had a good shot on net. Luckily, I think that was Clay and just got a bit of a block on it. And look at this, guys. They're getting the Stanley Cup ready for us. Hopefully, we're uh, you know celebrating a win tonight. Not going home and uh, flying to Tampa for game six. All right, and speaking of the first line, they got Matthews, Wright, and DeMarchi out there now. And Tampa has got their first line. Angle point, Kucherov, are you kidding me? And Kucherov buries it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, game is tied up, 3-3. And there's still a minute left in the third. Anything can happen here. What sucks is it's 20 minute periods and I'm already committed because I started the, this period. I'm thinking we'd hold on, but um, we are going to have to wait for a goal as hopefully it's not theirs. Okay, yeah, nice safe Modinger there. DeMarchi's coming in. Will he be the hero again with another game winner? Vashlevsky shuts the five hole. The scan's not over yet, guys. 30 seconds to go here. Regulation. 35, I should say. They still got that first line out there. They're trying to get Kucherov another. We have a delayed penalty. That is wonderful. And with two seconds to go here, guys, looks like we're going to overtime and the Stanley Cup Final. This is going to be a good one. They just replayed the Kucherov game-tying goal. I still can't believe that. we got to lock this down. Like, off 3 nothing. We let them score 3 in the third. Like, you just can't be doing that. This is interesting, guys. So we're on a PK right now, and Matthews is out there playing D, I think? Or maybe he's just out there regularly, I'm guessing. Whoever took a penalty for us must have been one of our PKers. Honestly, it might have been Demarchi because it takes so many. And I know he is on the PK, so that makes sense. Matthews, though, is a 95. Uh, more than fine with him being out there. Top penalty minutes, Demarchi number one in the playoffs. No surprise. Mirror up here, the center. Top 10 hits. Demarchi's also leading. Also, I just noticed he is in the box, so I was right. It just uh, made too much sense. Volkun, nice block from Angle. Chinikov, do not let him get a hat trick. Points walking in. Nice moves, Chinikov. Trying to get that hat trick in the game winner, but Andre there with the save. Chinikov coming in. What a save from Andre, the big pad save. I don't even know how he got that under him. Oh no. Wow, if we would have lost on a goal like that. I honestly would have freaked out. Still 15 seconds left on this power play. What a save there on point. 20 minute periods makes the power plays feel so long. Uh, obviously, like when you're playing online stuff, power plays go by pretty quick. I think that dump's going to do it. Come on, Demarchi, get out of the box and score the game winner. You got like four or five this uh, playoff. What's one more? Chini what a move by Chinikov. Luckily, good D. Roslovic coming in. Nice block. Cross coming here, guys. Trying to take on four guys like McDavid to Ratcliffe. Andre shuts the door. I'll notice, too, I got the broadcast camera angle on now. I tried true broadcast, but... I feel like True's too low. I feel the regular broadcast angle is actually a lot nicer. It's higher. You can see more of the ice. I think it's actually more probably realistic than the True broadcast. But uh, five minutes into this OT or so, still looking for that OT winner. Tampa set up here. They're passing well. Nice block shot. Okay. Come on. Ogren. Got something going from the corner. McConnell Barker. Fourth line. Rebound. Oh. If they actually would have got a handle of that puck, that might have been GG. Fourth line, that's usually who comes up in the Stanley Cup. Over it! Let's go to Colin White. The fourth line gets it done. Five minutes into OT. We are Stanley Cup champions again. I'm not going to lie. I was like, I just want this to end. It is so long watching 20 minute periods. There we go. We win it at home for the third time. Arizona hoisting the Stanley Cup. We got to beat a pretty good team there, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, a tough road, too. That Minnesota Wild team was insane. The Avalanche, a bit of a dynasty. Uh, definitely, you know, didn't play any easy teams, I'd say. And our team was stacked, top to bottom. Again, I think, you know, I've mentioned it many, many times. But you got an 87 star show on your bottom D pair. And not for chemistry reasons, just because that's where he belongs based on the ratings. Your team is stacked. Handshake line here. I think that was Clint who said last time. He's got all the gray hair. Onger, Matthews. 
I'm not sure who was handy shaking there. Gabe Velarde, okay. Ratcliffe, I feel like he should be showing us point. Kucherov. Someone on Tampa Bay will actually recognize. Funk there, I think that might be Brain Point, number 10. I'm, uh, I'm, bl I'm blanking on Point's number right now. And look at this, guys. Demarchi, back to back Conn Smith Trophy winners. He asked for 18 million last year. We waited all summer, gone for 10. If we were to keep this going, he's probably asking for 20. <laughs> Even, I mean, he probably knows too. Like, if you think about it, a guy who fought that much, he'd be like a very marketable player. I'm sure, like, you know, the team would love a, a star like that. I'm trying to think. Maybe like a Jerome Ginla, except fighting even more. So, fights as much as Ty Domi, but, you know, scores like he's Matt Sundin, something like that, for a Toronto reference. And speaking of Toronto, their current uh, star player, our captain, Austin Matthews. Out to receive the Stanley Cup for the third time. Never gets old. It would be cool. To, I'm pretty sure when they have the Stanley Cup pick, they're all going to hold up threes because it's like a third time for a lot of them winning. But it would be cool if they maybe had like a few Stanley Cup celebrations they could cycle through just so, you know, it wasn't the same every time. First guy to get it this time. I can't see the name. I, the, the angle. I can't. It's imminent. Oh, that's kind of cool. So the five-time AHL goal scoring leader. He obviously hasn't done as well in the NHL, but I think he'll take actually playing in the show and lifting the Stanley Cup. Ogre there's a fourth liner. He's not really a veteran, though, so I don't know. I feel like maybe Soderstrom coming back to the deadline, he might be a guy they would have given it to first. And there you have Jake Andre lifting the Stanley Cup. Goalie always deserves it, even if he only played okay, which I think his numbers were pretty decent. So let's see. They got twos up for sure, because we went back to back. Uh, some guys have ones. Maybe this is their first. Some guys have twos, again, for the back to back. Matthew should be holding up a three. Like, he's won three cups. Definitely want more twos there for the back to back, but I'll take it. So, there we go guys, 4-3. I'm guessing, how do you not give first start at Colin White? Not only the Stanley Cup winner, right there we see it again, but the Stanley Cup winner. Actually, he's probably second start. Oh no, it's Genica with the two goals uh, that kind of brought them back in that game. I still can't believe. 3 nothing lead, less than 10 minutes to go in the third period. White actually had an assist in that game as well. So, like I said, the fourth line, often the guys who come up as the heroes in the playoffs. Just don't pay them for, you know, one game success. I'm thinking about the, uh, you know, Dave Bolins of the world. There we go, guys. Stanley Cup champions once again. It feels good. DeMarchi, 24 points in 19 games. I don't want to sim. Sometimes lose things when the franchise ends. So right there, you can see our road to the Cup and then Tampa Bay. Five games against Columbus. Seven games against the Bruins. Swept the Rangers before losing to us in five. I actually should check AHL quick. The team we lost to, Henderson. Did they go on to win? Nope, they lost in the next round. So yeah, our AHL team got super unlucky. Player stats here. So Demarchi, 24-19, Conn Smythe winning, right 23, point behind. Geeky did well, same with Matthews. I mean, anyone putting up over a point per game cannot complain. Andre here, 16-3, 0 0.911 at 2.64. Those are also really nice numbers. I'm wondering if we actually look at players here, if anyone's rating's gone up. So Bolt here, our rookies, up to an 83. Um, I think that's it, though. White's actually gone down. Just won us the Stanley Cup, and they dropped his rating. That is kind of savage, honestly. So looking at the awards here. We'll start with the AHL. Bridgeport wins the Calder Cup, and we win the regular season for the fourth straight year, unfortunately. We're trying to win the Calder. We're not trying to win the McGregor Kilpatrick Trophy. That's why I can't remember the name of it. That is a long name for a trophy. Individual awards here, Stan Coven, most points, also got MVP. Uh, Koibu there, most goals. Um, Albert, best rookie. Howes, best D-man. So we've gotten the best D-man back-to-back years, most goals, MVP, and most points, all like back-to-back -back years in the AHL. Um, Anderson there, best goalie. We also got the year before, so back-to-back -back years for that. Um, MVP of the playoffs, though. Erat there. London, back-to-back -back years gained sportsmanship. I'm guessing he's got really good discipline. Rutland, community involvement. And Anderson there had low schools against. Okay, so NHL, back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. You gotta love it. Three straight years, President's Trophy winners. Back-to-back -back Clarence S. Campbells. Individual awards here, Ross Yard, Ross and the Hart. Fox got the James Norris again. Kaprizov, Lady Bing. Bolt, Calder, so that's pretty cool to see in our final year. Demarchi. Back-to-back con -back Smythe. Alan Felt got the Vesna. Wow. So, yeah, our former players usually go on to have some successful careers. Andre there. Um, second time in three years, William Jennings Trophy. Bernard Docker there at the Bill Master Team. Kind of cool. Vegas coach. Is that Marc-Andre Fleury winning the Jack Adams with Vegas? Um, <laughs> M. Fleury. It's gotta be, right? I mean... Or no, because it would actually be a, a headshot of him. Never mind. It's just a guy named M. Fleury. Sorry. Um, blonde moment there. Lundell, Selkie Trophy, Rossi, Ted Lindsay, and Richard Shard there goes to Boldy. Okay, so um, overall, guys, a very, very successful, I think, you know, franchise series. Three Stanley Cups, 
breaking records. And one thing else I forgot to show you guys is the updated record book. At the bottom there you can see Matthews is only 38 goals behind Shane Doan now for the all-time record for Arizona Coyotes. I feel like next season he probably would have passed him. Um, in terms of a season, Jake Ottinger set the win record there with 44 this season, which is pretty cool. I mentioned Ty Domi as well, being like DeMarchi, and uh, that's the guy who's got to beat there for the penalty minutes. I mean, 174 is only halfway to Domi's 347, but if he sticks with us his whole career, penalty minutes on Keith Kachuk, 1500, maybe DeMarchi can catch that. Um, I don't think we did anything for the rookie or the game, but I wanted to show you guys the NHL here. So Anze Kopitar goes down with the most ever games played. Ovechkin second, Thornton third, Marlowe fourth. Mr. Hockey, fifth. Um, after that, Andre Vasilevsky, most goalie games played. Most goals, Ovechkin, I mean, just destroys Gretzky's record. Crosby finishes second. Gretzky, though, still most points. Although Crosby, 700 behind him, just because he went on to play such a long career, but still, like, 700 points. That's another, what, 10 years of 70 points? Like, that's still quite a bit. You can see assists there. Uh, wins, Brodeur still actually 691. Vasilevsky only 499, so that just shows you not only did Brodeur play a ton, but he also won a bunch too. So very, very impressive. Cool to kind of see though what happened here with the record book. Our coach here, we did not have the whole time because our original coach was just not getting it done. This guy you can see A plus on everything but teaching, which was still an A. Uh, with him though, 311 wins, 131 losses, 68.9. That rounds up to a 69 win percentage, nice. Three Stanley Cups, three Presidents Trophies. Yeah, like this guy was a very, very good coach. So uh, I wish we kind of found him earlier, who knows. Maybe would have even won another one. But like I said, happy with how this went. So that's it, guys, for the franchise series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You can see there, franchise mode is now complete. Um, I will have another pull-up probably within the next week or so asking you guys which team I should be next. I'll leave in the comments, though, which team you want me to be. And I'll probably just kind of take, like, the top four or five commented teams and put them into the poll. Normally, I like to do a rebuilding team. But I've seen a lot of people saying I should take a contender, try and, you know, win with them early then maybe rebuild in the middle and then try and win again at the end or just try and keep them good the entire time. I'll just kind of switch it up. So yeah, very curious to see which team you guys want me to use next. But that's going to do it, guys, for this episode and this series. Thank you so much for the support on it. As always, if you did enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, there's no way you're watching still so haven't subscribed. But hit the sub button if you haven't, please. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.